Cat gives birth. Then doctor realized one of them is not a cat. Cats often have reputation of being independent and aloof, except when it comes to caring for infants and young children. They can show maternal instincts just as strong as many other species. It's common for owners to get female cats as paid to remove the reproductive organs and prevent pregnancy. Male cats can be extremely nurturing and caring for their offspring. This is much more common for domestic cats that have been socialized by humans, but it's not inherited of even feral colonies. It sounds like you got one of the good ones who's actively interested in being a good dad, encourage that, and help him out with daddy duties. Then do everyone a favor and get both mom and dad fixed after you find home for the kittens. Congratulations on the successful letter, by the way. Give mama some love from the internet for all of us. Will you? She's got to be tired. The domestic cat is one of the most vicious colors out there. The only reason we are not afraid of them is because they are small and they occasionally stoop to cuddling with us. Not only do cats hunt and kill things, they are brutal about it. They will catch a mouse, raid, maul, etc. And then let it go only to catch it and release it again and again, until it's dead. A dog watches their human for confirmation that they are safe while they are vulnerable and pooping cat kind of wants the same thing. One of my Siamese, Death Army, Mackenzie, the female goes with when I woke up in the morning. If they didn't find her on time, maybe someone else would. When they eventually got to her, she was an expected company. What did they do now? Was her wasn't always resident of said Gordeso in Russia. The local attraction was home to tigers, bears, leopards, lizards, camels, reindeer, turtles, monkeys, and lions, but never cats. However, when zookeeper else was venturing to work an old winter morning, she noticed a small pile of dirt moving. When she looked closer, she realized it wasn't something else entirely. Musa fed into Alice's hand. When she found her, there's a tiny kitten, was frozen and even had icicles stuck to her nose. Alice wasn't sure if she was going to make it through the night. She stuffed the hairball inside her jacket and went to work. The vets tried and did everything they could for the little tot. Then all they could do was wait. But Musu was about to shock them all. To everyone's disbelief, Musu made it through the first night, then the second night, and then the third. Between shifts, the keepers would come to the staff room to shower her in affection. She was still underweight and weak, but she still managed to get up and run around every day. She quickly became one of the family. Then they realized how much danger she was truly in. As Moose became strong, she longed to explore. The window of their staff room was her only experience of the outside world. They wanted to keep her safe. After all, there were wild animals on the other side of the glass. But one day, as Alice opened the door, Moose slipped out. They managed to keep her inside for over a year, only ever leaving for a short walk on a leash. How had she found herself? They never expected her to come back like this. Alice spent two days searching for Lizzie around the grounds. Every time she passed the crocodiles, the clutter, her stomach clenched. What if she made her way into the wrong pen? What if she wasn't quick enough? Alice was warned by her colleagues not to expect to see Lucy again. But she refused to listen to them. She had faith. And sometimes all you need is a little bit of faith. Musa eventually strolled back to her home in the center of the zoo. It was Alice who saw her pawing at the glass door. She couldn't help but cry. At the beginning, she had intended to find Moo's home, but she could never bring herself to say goodbye. Her love for Lisa continued to grow. That wasn't the only thing that was growing. After a few weeks, Alice noticed the differences in her beloved cat. Musu was lethargic and cranky. She always had a playful personality, often hiding behind the, the tablecloth 
and slapping those who passed, Alice began to leave the door open for an adventure out onto the grounds. But Moose was no longer any interested in exploring, and instead, she would just lie on the ground outside, but they never expected to discover this. Alice returned to the staff room after feeding time to have a hot cup of tea. But when she got there, Lizzie was nowhere to be found. This time she didn't panic. Alice Nemus was smart. She had made her way back once before, so Alice was sure she could do it again. But as the second day passed, rain began to fall, heavier than Alice had seen in months. The animals were off. Something was coming. Then she heard thunder. Alice and the other keepers grabbed their flashlights to search every nook and cranny around the zoo. They was sure Musa wouldn't have left the ground here. There was food in a small rodents outside. There was nothing but cars and parking spaces. Then, by the line clutter, they heard a cry. Alice fall with the noise to the wood area of the trees and plants. Deep within the bush, she saw Moose. However, she wasn't alone. Something was crawling on her chest. Alice crawled into the bush and Miss refused to leave. But there were four newborn kittens and among them were baby hedgehogs. Alice didn't know what to do. Where did they come from and why were they with Moose yet? One by one, Alice slid them into a box of blankets and brought them all into the vet room. Alice had more questions than answers. When Alice told the vet about Moose, he laughed. But when he opened the books, the smile turned to a frown. Deep lines burrowed into his forehead. I've never seen anything like this, he whispered before taking Lucy and her young. He separated the species into two boxes before leaving for a talk with Alice. When they returned, they found out that was going on. Mushi had pugged up her kittens and moved them one by one over to the hodges. She sat among them proud as ever, purring at the proud into her forehead. Were the Hodges not hurting her? Were they not hurting the young kittens? But as Annalises watched them together, something clicked. Mochi had adopted all eight Hodges. And although their prickles were scarce of many animals, Mochi was not like most creatures. Alice was amazed. But then she worried for the safety of their kittens. She took the Hodges away and attempted to nurse them from a bottle. However, after hours of them refusing, she had no choice but to return them to their new mother. Little did Alice know, this wasn't the first innocence for inner species adoption. Another cat in Russia, called Rosinka, made a headline after she adopted a baby squirrel monkey named Theodore. The young creature was brought home by the zookeeper after being abandoned by this mother. Thankfully, Rosink immediately began to comfort him. Was it just cats in Russia who had the tendency to help other animals in need? Cats are commonly misunderstood. They are less popular household pet when it comes to dogs. And many canine lovers put the fact down to feelings, malicious demeanor. However, cat owners around the world have rallied to share the benefit of owning a fluffy and is said to lower the risk of heart disease and help the owners sleep better. Their mother managed to nurse and care for all children. Later, they discovered where the hedgehogs had come from. Turns out their mother had been involved in a tragic accident with the lawnmower on the grounds of the zoo earlier that week. The tiny tots had been starving before most came across them. Alice was astounded, and she rescued them before she had her kittens.